All right, today we get an opportunity to sit down and visit a little bit about the power of words. It's interesting to me that we really realize this on our trip here in Cabo. How many people are fluent in Spanish in this group? Oh, yeah, which would be an astounding zero. Yeah, none of us, right? So we've had to rely on a couple cool things. I think Google Translate, we were able to use that today. That was kind of fun. There were some mistranslations. It was kind of interesting. How did it do, Gene? You did it. I watched a little bit of it as well. Yeah, so I, I used the... Welcome to Adulting Decrypted. We are your hosts. I'm Gene, and I'm starting my first year of college. I'm Ashton. I'm a music performer, composer, and educator. I'm Gideon, a high school senior. I'm Roscoe, the dad. Those are my three sons, and this is Adulting Decrypted, where we discuss ways to become adults and the things we need to know to be successful in life. Google Transcribe and Google Translate, and it worked decently well. For the most part, you could catch up on what the gist of what they were trying to say was, but sometimes the the grammar was just weird. Or the words were just wrong altogether because you knew that it, that's not what it was supposed to say. <laughs> yeah, just based on the context of, of the nomenclature of what's normally used. I know I've relied on Ashton multiple times. He's one with cell service, and the Google Translate camera feature... Is that what it is? It's under translate? Yeah, you just throw throw your camera on something, and it it's pretty cool, actually. It replaces the words on signs and boxes and stuff with the language you're translating to, in our case, English, and it's kind of fun. Obviously, it's not perfect. There's a lot of things that don't make sense, but you get about 70% more <laughs> than you would have without it, so... Yeah, and to me, maybe 100% more. You've got a, a basis in Spanish a couple of years in high school. Gideon, did you take any language in school? Nope. Okay. I did not take any language. Okay. Sounds good. Well, the old adage, have you ever heard, sticks and stones will break my bones, but wor- words will never hurt me? You guys ever heard that? I have. Many a time. Yep. yep. And now, is this something you guys have said amongst your friends, or is that stuff that I've said, or where'd you hear it from? Do you think? I don't. I don't know. The first place I heard it, I normally use it as a joke. But yeah, I mean, I've said it a couple times. I think I've heard it from like media, like songs or maybe movies or something. I would never use it. I don't think in a conversation unless, like Ashton said, for a joke. Yeah, I think the first time I ever heard it was it's probably in a song. I couldn't tell you which one it was or where it was, but I like heard it. And it's like okay, I guess that. I mean, sure. And then I know that we talked about it later on outside of the podcast. And I was like, oh, yeah, it just doesn't make sense at all. And we might have talked about the power of words before, but it's one that is worth repeating coming into 2024. And and there's two types, I think. There's two types of words we need to pay attention to. One is self-dialogue and positive talk. And then there's obviously the outer talk that we talk to others but uh, mostly today probably the power of words in as it pertains to positive self-talk and as it pertains to our own self-talk you know as far as it's uh, positive self-talk and and optimistic self-talk do you mean like self-affirmations yeah they can be affirmations absolutely affirmations are one part of that And for the listener, Gideon, can you tell me a little bit about affirmations? Yeah, of course. So I know in some like self-help classes or stuff like that, they'll be like, you got to do 10 self-affirmations in the morning. And what that kind of means is you could look at yourself in the mirror and be like, I am beautiful. I am powerful. I'm independent. And just like an affirmation is a positive thing about yourself. Yeah, is it always, though? And and I'm not trying to be dumb. To do it as an exercise, it's always positive. But do you think we give ourselves negative affirmations? Yeah, I mean, just like affirming a belief, technically. So it's like positive affirmations is how it's often stated. So it's not like any affirmation, but a positive affirmation. Yeah, I guess my point was is that I think we give ourselves negative affirmations affirmations all day long. There are times we go, oh, I knew I couldn't do that. Oh, I knew that was going to come up. Oh, I I, I was going to forget that anyways. 
Is it? Is there any other ones that we probably do or uh, that we share? I yeah, I, I knew that was a bad question, or uh, I knew the answer was wrong. I just didn't know the right one. I knew I wouldn't make it in the job. I knew I wouldn't get that part or any of those things. I know, like sometimes if I make a mistake, I'm like, ah, oh, stupid. Yeah, when it's I, not like that decision could have been stupid, but like, ah, oh, I'm stupid. You know, I do. I do. I think that's an interesting one. The one I catch myself saying that I don't even realize it. It's like I quit. I'm done. I'm frustrated. I'm angry. I'm whatever. Right. And I'm going, I'm done. Instead of saying it's time to be done. Right. Or I can't do it. I quit. You know. So yeah, I think we all do that if we're really honest with ourselves. And as a listener, hope you think as we go through this list and we think through this, there's going to be a challenge at the end and, and just to put it out there and you're to get you prepped for it and get it in your thoughts. The challenge is going to be coming up with a word that we strive to live 2024 by. For me, 2023 was a year of mobility. And what that meant to me was that I needed to be willing to be mobile in my job. You know, it was mobility for me personally on my exercise goals. I wanted to be able to do more things, be able to get up and down easier. You know, and I accomplished a little bit of all of it. I'm not perfect at it by any stretch, but at least it got it in my head and got me thinking about it. The first reason why we want to do this boosts confidence. Those daily affirmations, do you still feel pretty silly doing those in the mirror in the morning? I don't know if I've ever done one of those. So, I mean, I can imagine. I almost gave myself a negative affirmation. I keep turning this mic. We're, we're not using our stands. Some of them I'm like, that is so dumb. I'm so dumb. Why do I keep doing that? Anyways, but I didn't say those out loud, right? Those are internal. So I even think an internal positive self-affirmation probably adds value as well. I know for me, whenever I've like been told to like, oh yeah, write down like 10 things that you're good at right now. And I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> and that's so it like takes a long time. And then like, it, it's a slow process for me in this regard. Yeah. So I think if you have those to look at on a quick at hand, here's where I think we get in trouble is that we can at times take away from our self confidence mm-hmm. as we as we do an affirmation. If I look in the mirror and say, "You have the most beautiful thick head of hair I've ever seen," you're you have Fabio type hair. <laughs> is that what is that going to do to me? Do I believe it? It's in you an unrealistic expectation. Yeah, and you're just like basically being sarcastic to yourself, which is. Sometimes worse than just saying it flat out and like, yeah, this is not something I enjoy. <laughs> right, right. So I think I think what we can do, though, let's say that it's a trait that I'm working on. Let's say I choose to be kind to people. If I look in the mirror and say, I choose to be kind, I choose to be nice, I do my best to see the good in others. Would that be just as powerful as saying, I see good in others? I think that it could be more powerful than you saying... I see the good in others because then, you know, like you said, it gives you the choice. Like I choose to see the good when I see the good makes it feel like that's just something that happens and something that you were born with. And so it's not as important as maybe an acquired skill of choosing. Yeah. And I think you're right. And I think the other part of that is it lets me make mistakes. It lets me with my own personal self-talk realize, oh, so if I'm not nice to somebody, if I'm if I cut somebody off and I and I don't flip them off, we what do we do in this group? We changed it from a flip off to thumbs down. Or the, well, I thought it was the loser sign, right? You could do that too. But you know, instead of me doing that, if I could think, okay, I'm not that person. I'm not always kind to somebody. If it says I choose to be kind, or I'm, I see the good in others, trying to see that allows me that growth opportunity. It doesn't fix it. Yeah, so I think it's good to build those strengths. So I'd, I'd make a list of those, Gene. Make them now and make them often. That way when somebody asks you, you don't have to step back and think, okay, what were they again? And it might be one of those words that you work on. The other I put down is it enhances motivation. Positive self-dialogue serves as a powerful motivation, motivator. Encouraging words can inspire and propel you forward to where you want to be. It also gives you that sense of enthusiasm and motivation to pursue your goals with vigor. What do you think of that? 
positive self-talk as it goes to those. Gene, you missed out on our last episode in season six. We set some goals. How did we do on those goals? We didn't, but that's okay. We did it? We didn't. We did not. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I think we, we lacked on those a little bit. Had we had some positive words behind those and turned to ourselves and looked ourselves in the mirror and said, I'm choosing to follow this goal or I'm choosing to be more proactive, it probably would have given us some enthusiasm, right? The other thing, it, and I think this is a big one, that fosters resilience. What does resilience mean to this group around this table? Hello. If you're listening to this right now, that means you're currently listening to an episode of Adulting Decrypted. And let me just say thank you. My name's Ashton, one of the hosts of Adulting Decrypted, and I wanted to steal a quick second of your time to do a shameless little plug. If you've listened to our podcast for any sort of time, you know that we talk about a bunch of different stuff all about adulting. Because our goal is to help individuals in this task we call adulting. Now, we have just revamped the way that we do this. If you go to adultingdecrypted.com, you can see all of our episodes sorted out by category. We've sorted it into financial, practical, emotional, social, and things just for fun. So, if any of those categories are of particular interest to you right now, you can go onto the website, look through there, and see all of our episodes that correlate with that specific thing. This website's completely free to use. It's just another tool for our listeners to find things that are more important to them now. So, for example, if I was looking at it, I'd scroll through and say, hey, you know what? I want to see what the Adult Encrypted crew has talked about socially. Well, one of our first episodes, season one, episode three, how do I talk to people? That's where we talked about all how to talk to people. So if that's something you want right now, you can go find that right now. Also in this one, season three, episode 15, The Power of a Humble Mediator, where we talk to one of my old bosses about his business as a mayor, also as a small theater owner. Some really cool stuff. So, if you're looking for a better way to organize through all your self-help podcasts, try adultingdecrypted.com and enjoy the rest of the episode. To me, I think resilience is being able to push past the negative things that will come and are coming and be able to be like, you know what? I know that these things are happening, but being able to push past them and not letting them set you back as much. I like that. I like the <clears throat> dictionary definition as I, as I most often do. But the second definition it has here is resilience is a noun is the ability of a substance or object to spring back into shape or have elasticity. So I think of resilience as like that that Rocky quote. It's like it's not about, you know, what does he say? It's not about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and get back up and keep going and whatever. So I think of that a lot probably. It's just like how much can you take and spring back in the effort of something you want to achieve. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and with that positive self-talk, I believe it's going to help you build up that resilience. Sylvester Stallone personally went through when he was creating Rocky, right? He'd been knocked down. He got knocked down hard and he was able to get back up from it. I totally agree with you. And I think knowing that and knowing where you want to go and the words you choose lets you back bounce and get more resilience faster. It also improves focus and productivity. You know, words have a power of shaping your mindset during any given situation or any given task. Using positive language when engaging in these activities will help you improve focus and productivity. Positive self-dialogue during projects can and will lead to more optimistic and efficient approaches. You guys buy into that? I think so. I think so. Like, being optimistic always adds a little bit of energy for me, I think, when I can. I find I'm better at it when I am, like, in a group that needs optimism. 
versus I am the one being pessimistic. <laughs> um, if there's a situation where I know I need to be the optimist, I know I I try and use it to help. I think it's good. Yeah, and this goes back to that first saying, sticks and stones can break my bones, but but words will never hurt me. I think they do hurt, right, Ashton? Especially in that example of saying where I need to be the optimistic person. I can be, you know, and, and I'll get somebody go, oh, yeah, I'm positive. I'm a positive person. I'm positive we're going to fail. Well, wait, hold on. That's not what we need here. We we need to step back and be willing to look at ourselves and be honest. Where's our shortcomings, right? I'm not saying, hey, let's let's fake it till you make it, but where's my shortcoming? Let me find that person. I'm in a bad place. I need an Ashton to lean on. Ashton, can you be the positive source here? Can you help us get through this? Or I need to leverage other people's skills. How many times did I leverage your skill and your translation this week? A couple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I was frustrated. I was going, look, I don't understand any of this, and I'm tired and cranky. You know, so, it, but it, it wasn't helping anybody. So I, I think that it, improving focus and productivity reduces stress and anxiety. How can having a positive or let's even do the reverse of that because we've talked so much about positive. Negative thought, how does that increase your stress or anxiety? One reason that I see is when you're telling yourself all these bad things that are happening or could happen, you're more worried about them. Because you're like, oh, I I know sometimes I'll just be walking with a plate from like the counter to the table and my friend will be like, what happened if you drop this right now and like it shattered everyone? Like, wow, I could be bad. But if I'm like constantly thinking about that and be like, oh no, I, I could drop this, I could push this off the table. Oh no, like I could do this and then these people would be embarrassed with me. Like, it just leads and builds upon itself. It becomes a vicious spiral downwards. I think something interesting along that line is what we talk a lot about in skiing, where it's look where you want to go. Because that same thing, if you're thinking about, I cannot hit that tree, and you're staring right at the tree, and like that's the only thing you focus on is that negative outcome of you slamming into that tree, you're going to hit the tree. But instead, if you're facing right toward the tree and you like look out to the middle of the run where you probably should be skiing, then it'll most likely lead you to where you're looking, that positive outcome instead of the negative of staring down that huge tree. And even if you do hit the tree, it'll be less hurtful. (laughs) Yeah, if you're looking away from the tree. Speaking of personal experience, right, Gene? Yes. Speaking from direct personal experience, Skiing down a hill, going through the trees, I'm like, man, I want to hit that big jump. And because of the jump, like, went into the trees and came back out. And I looked at the jump and I, I saw the jump pass me, like, oh, I missed a turn. I look forward, I see a tree. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> but since I was able to look away and get most of my body weight away from the tree, it didn't hurt as much as it could have if I just stared at the tree and hit it straight on. I agree. And, and those positive words is you're, you're going to that. And it's that practice, that mental practice. I don't know how many things went wrong on this trip in my mind that when we got here were not issues. What happens if the lady's not there at the airport? What happens if the hotel's not ready? What happens if, you know, I'm going through all these things and finally I've been out of work for for five months and I've set the money aside. We prepaid for it. All this stuff is already done. So I need to change my, my self-talk to say I can make more money. Where I'm at now doesn't mean that's where I'm going to be next week, next month, next year. And because I have that, it reduces that stress and anxiety. I love the skiing example. I like the real sharing of it. And now as we think positive in other areas, it does reduce stress. I believe that. Strength and goal achievement. Positive self-talk aligns your thoughts with your goals. Can you say that one more time? Yeah, strength and goal achievement by positive self-talk aligns your thoughts with your goals. Do you believe that? I do. And here and yeah, and here's why is because I think as we tell ourselves this is I'm trying to be or I'm going to be and I'm working on and I'm I strive for it helps me get closer to my goals than saying, Man, I'm so tense. Man, I'm not limber. Wow, I I'm so rigid. No, I can't adopt new things and different things. I think by having Positive self-talk, it helps me get to my goals and achieve them better. The other thing uh, I want to talk about is shapes behaviors and habits. 
what negative self-talk have we done? Well, that's probably not fair. That's a dangerous question to ask. But I, I think if we were honest with ourselves, if we think of negative self-talk that we do that leads to bad behavior, I think we can think of quite a few. So therefore, then we have to look at the flip side of that. What positive self-talk can we give ourselves to help us develop better habits and continue doing those? Something I find interesting about that statement and like what popped into my mind is there's a book and I'm not quite sure the title, but it was a book designed to help smokers stop smoking. And the whole thing was like, after you read it, you won't even want to smoke. And a big point was always remembering, like always thinking about what would a non-smoker do and thinking like a non-smoker. So it's like that could be the same for our goals. Like if your goal was to stop smoking and you think about that or like maybe another bad habit and like, well, what would somebody that doesn't have this bad habit do? Not what would somebody with the bad habit do that wants to stop? What would somebody who's trying to not smoke do right now? It's what would a non-smoker do right now? I think that could be an interesting side to look at it from. You know, I like that you said that. There's plenty of times over the last month of December, because I got really busy with the company I'm doing the consulting work for, like really busy. I would drive home and go, I'm just too tired. I've got my 10,000 steps in or my 20,000 steps in. But I thought, Gideon, what would a physically fit person do? Right? What would they do? I'm like, well, they'd still go to the gym. They missed it in the morning. They're going to go at night. You know, so I'd drive over and I worked out a couple times at night. And I worked out on a Saturday so that I could hit my goal. Right? So I love that you mentioned that by thinking positive and thinking of ourselves as that physically fit person, or that mobile person, what would I do? Not, oh, uh, what's everybody else doing? What's the the other the other chunky monkey doing? You know, yeah, but, for sure. but what is a fit person doing? I like that. Cultivate a positive outlook. It's interesting because it's kind of along the same lines is improve focus and productivity, right? Or even helps us achieve our goal. But it's even more than that. By focusing on the positive aspects of a situation, you cultivate a, an optimistic outlook that can enha- enhance your overall well-being. What I mean by that is I, I truly believe that all these things will work together for our good. It's a hard one to believe all the time, except it's one of my core beliefs. But I find it hard to believe. How is that possible? Cultivating a positive outlook... By focusing on the positive aspects of a situation, you cultivate an optimistic outlook that can enhance your overall well-being. Therefore, all these things can work together for our good. And if we remember that in any given situation, that we're going to learn from it, it does work towards our good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like you said, it's a big part of your core belief, and as so mine. Like, not just... It's a part of our religion, but I truly believe that everything will be okay. In the end, no matter what, it'll be okay. And you can look at it from a small situation, because I like Gene's example of of dropping a plate, because I I did that accidentally while we were here. I did it to the place that we're renting. I accidentally dropped a ceramic plate on the floor, and it shattered everywhere. But you think about it right after you, like, the plate slipped out of my hand. I was like, oh, garbage, this is bad. Like, I'm going to... Uh, this is awful. Everything is awful. It's horrible. And then you look at it, and I think about in a year, I probably won't even remember I dropped that plate. We'll remind you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> that's what family's for. But that's for. not the point. <laughs> oh, okay? that's right. <laughs> when something bad happens, you think about it in a long ter- a long-term scale, it doesn't matter as much as you think it would. And it might be like, me throwing stuff under the rug because that's a really small example and stuff really bad can happen to a lot of people but no matter what happens so I think that focusing on the positive mindset can help make any problem easier and seem less stressful yeah and I think some of one of those things that like work together for your good so to speak would be like oh yeah I learned where to place my hands to better balance a plate 
or how I can sweep up a mess made of glass or ceramic. It, you learn things, no matter whether the outcome was good or bad. And I've heard a lot of things that say, like, hey, you actually remember the things that you learned from when you did things wrong more often than you remember the things you learned when you did it right the first time. Great, great points. Thank you. And then number nine, I think Gideon goes right with where you're going. It encourages self-compassion, right? You didn't beat yourself up for it. Like, yeah, that sucked. I got pretty quick feedback. The plate broke. Dad or mom said, well, what were you thinking? I wasn't just slipped out of my hands. You got the feedback already. It's already done. The negatives already happened. But if you can look at it, go and look at really in six weeks, six months, a year, this isn't going to matter. It encourages that self-compassion. And positive talk will then also allow you to have those bad times, those bad moments, those bad decisions. But if we're kind to ourselves during those, would you have yelled at somebody else had they dropped that plate? No, I don't think I would have yelled at somebody. Then why would you yell at yourself? Right? Why would you be mad at yourself? Why, you know, would you take it out? Would you say, you're an idiot, you're so dumb, you know, why did you do that? Probably not in a lot of situations where we turn to ourselves and say, oh, you're an idiot. You're so dumb. Why did I do that? One thing I tell students a lot when I'm teaching them at at band is to make large mistakes. So when someone's learning a new skill in the percussion space, we often teach them to ignore the notes. If they're really new, ignore the right everything and just swing as hard as they can so we can get the motions working right, and then we'll refine the specifics later. It goes back to something Gene was talking about a little bit earlier about how we learn better from larger mistakes. We remember those lessons. Because a lot of students will get lost in themselves wondering like, if they're hitting the right notes or if they're playing the right rhythms and whatever. It's like, hey, if you're really new, we don't really care. We're just trying to get you to, to move right. And then once you move right, then it's like, okay, well... If you're not playing loud enough to hear yourself, how are you going to know if you're hitting the right or wrong notes? Because hitting it loud enough allows you to associate whether or not something's right or wrong. So just stuff like that. Yeah, I like that. I, you know, it's, I think of that in choir and how many times I've sung softly and then stay of performance, you want to belt it out. You know, they're like, sing loud. And you're like, whoa, am I, is he, who is messing up? You know, <laughs> if, but if we would have had that whole time to work on it, I like that, Ashton. Miss big, miss early, right? Gives you longer to fix it. Yep. The last thing, I, it it creates a positive feedback loop, right? And we need that in this life. We need to have more positivity. Positive self-dialogue creates a positive feedback loop and then reinforces those things that you're looking for. Reinforces looking for the good in a bad situation. I know mom and I, you know, laying down in October when we're going through all that garbage that we talked about, we laid down one night and I said, you know, at least we have each other and we're relatively healthy. And then the next day, my tooth broke. I said, well, at least we have each other, and I'm going to lose some weight. You know? <laughs> no. But it, you know, that positive thinking, that positive feedback loop allows us to go through those other things, keeping a positive outlook, looking at things better. We're in 2024. If you haven't done so, we'd encourage you to pick a word. We at Adulting Decrypted, we've all picked different words. Gideon, would you like to go first? Share your word for the year and kind of a thought about it. So the word I chose is consistency. And if you've listened to the previous episode or a couple, I'm not sure when it was, but we did mention that as a group. Um, And I wanted to choose something else because, you know, we haven't talked about it yet, but this one really resonates with me and like the struggles that I have and the stuff that I'm like trying to work through consistency is a large roadblock in the way. So I think that being consistent with all of my different things will be my main goal for 2024 and maybe the word that I put up on my wall or something. Great. Thank you, Gid. Gene, would you like to share yours? Yeah. Um, Actually, before this podcast, I went through and I looked through a giant list of words that I saw on Pinterest because I was like, oh yeah, I got to think of a new word, and so I was going through them, 
And one that really stuck out to me, especially as I start this, going to a, to a new school in a new city that I've never really lived a long time at, the word I was wanting to focus on was connect. I want to focus on connecting with my peers, connecting with my teachers and my roommates, even like, well, y'all, my, my family, because I'll be further away. And so I need to remember to connect and stay connected, even with the friends that I've had all throughout high school that are now also going out to different colleges and different spots of the the world. I need to remember to connect. So that's going to be the, one of the words I'm going to focus on. I, I like it. So, so far, we're, we've got two C words, consistency and connect. And I hope you listeners, you hear this. We, we're not going like super strict on this one word and what it means, right? Connect means something to Gene, and it might be different to Gideon, right? Consistency and what that means to, to Gideon might be a little bit different than what Ashton has. Ashton, did you have a word you'd like to share with us? The word that I'm going to do is discover. Um, I think that's fun. The original word I was thinking of was seek, but everything about seek was like an attempt to find something, whereas discover implies a search, but also includes getting somewhere. <laughs> I like that. So I figured discover was a good one. Yeah, kind of fun. And, and I like that you explained to the listener a little bit of di- the difference between seek and discover, right? And as you... The fun thing is, is discovery, you're able to discover even more, right? It's not like there's something that you're truly trying to find. You're trying to discover something new and you can't approach your career like anybody else has ever done. That's the hard part to me about adulting. We, we'd like to look at a roadmap and be like, okay, if I get on this roadmap, if I get, if I follow this exact path, I'm going to end up here. So many things change in this world. You know, you can't compare yourself to anybody else. So I really like discover, Ashton. Great word. My word uh, for the year is going to be flow. And uh, flow and consistency are very similar in nature in some of it. You know, some of it is that, hey, we're doing the same thing. We're we're getting into the groove of doing the same thing. Mine, I, I chose flow because consistency to me sometimes feels very rigid. And with what I've got going on over the next year, I don't know where I'm going to be at. You know, to me, I put consistency like, I'm up at 6.30 and I'm in bed at 10.30. More like a missionary rule. But knowing where I'm going to be at in my life, I want that flow saying, hey, I need to do these five things, four things every day to feel like I've won the day. And so I'm going to let that flow around everything else that I've got going on. But flow also talks about being a steady stream, a steady movement, a steady progress. And that's what I need to make sure that I do this year. So that's why I chose flow. So, listener, as you think about your 2024 and beyond, we challenge you to think of a word. Think of something that's going to drive you to bigger, meaningful self-talk and help you be positive in those powerful words that you choose to describe yourself, right? As we build our affirmations, we build our positive outlook. I'd challenge each one of you as adulting decrypted uh, uh, team members that you think of how am I being positive in myself? And as you listener are putting this in place, do the same thing. And we'll see a great 2024. Yep. Make sure to choose your word, but also I would love to hear. And I know that the adult and decrypted family in general, all of us, you're also part of the family. So we would all love to hear it. So, you know, post about your word. Tell us what it means. Either in our DMs, tell us about it or post about it. Tag us in it. Use the hashtag like an adult. And we would... Love so much to hear from you guys. Love yeah, to reach out. Yeah, and give us your definitions of them, right? Going along that same line. Yep, everything is appreciated. Like an adult. Hey! Making words for 2024. Yeah. Like an adult. Gideon, did you ever take language in school? Nope, I haven't. Oh, there you go. Nope. I assume I was holding a hundred percent backwards. Do we need to start over? Okay. Cultivates a positive lookout out lookout. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cultivates a positive outlook. 
this one's a little bit interesting because it's kind of in the same vine vein. Okay. This kind of feels like one of those riddles, right? The user doesn't use it. No, wait. The user... Never mind. Yeah, that riddle's always super confusing. It is. Yeah. I agree. Can you restate your question again? <laughs> There's no question. It was more of a statement. It's, okay. Is an, a cultivate an optimistic... Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Adult and Decrypted. We really enjoyed having this week's conversation, and we hope you did as well. If you ever want to comment on our topics, you can send us a message to our website, adultingdecrypted.com, our email, adultingdecrypted at gmail.com, or through our Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn accounts at adultingdecrypted. If you have any topics for the show that you would like us to talk about, or if you are a parent and want us to talk about something your kids should know, Send us a message on any of the accounts mentioned. If you'd like to be a guest or have an idea for someone you think we should have on our show, feel free to send us an email detailing your thoughts to adultingdecrypted at gmail.com. Adulting is teamwork. We have merch. If you want to show off your Adulting Decrypted pride, check out our website, adultingdecrypted.com, or our partner website with shop.spreadshirt.com forward slash adulting dash decrypted. Lastly, if you enjoyed the show, Please consider supporting us on our Patreon at Adulting Decrypted. Along with the benefits that come with our Patreon, and trust us, there are some pretty good ones in there, you will not only be helping us continue in the effort to make great content, but you will be part of a community of individuals all trying their best to adult. We appreciate you listening, enjoying, and leaving your positive reviews. Now, the special song from Gene and Gideon.